Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Ladybird browser update for March 2024. It has been a lovely month in the project with lots of activity and interesting things happening. So uh, let me tell you about some of it right now. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is a new goal that we are setting for ourselves called Living on Ladybird. And this is essentially a dog fooding goal, but living on sounds a little bit nicer. Uh, it's a term that I borrow from Apple. So uh, what this is about is focusing on our own use case as developers uh, so that we can become the first users of Ladybird. Uh, and uh, in practical terms, that means making progress on our own most used websites, such as GitHub, where we do code collaboration, and uh, Discord, where we do communication. Uh, as well as the various web specifications and stuff like that that we need to read in order to work on the on the browser. Um, but yeah, the, the, the idea is that we're going to be able to live on Ladybird ourselves um, more and more over time as we work on the browser. So this month, we have focused hard on improving GitHub in Ladybird. Uh, and here is just a list of the things that um, did not used to work and now do work. Uh, so stuff like creating pull requests, issues, posting comments, um, and a whole bunch of other things. And um, a lot of this work was spearheaded by Alex and Tim. So really, really nice job uh, with all of this stuff. Uh, and I did a whole bunch of performance work on GitHub as well this month. A lot more will be needed, but um, I was able to make loading and interacting significantly faster. Uh, and I've got a bunch of screenshots here of, of uh, GitHub, um, browsing pull requests, um, doing code review. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool that we've gotten to the point where we can do some of our daily GitHub tasks in Ladybird. Um, and uh, on the topic of living on, I think this month I also spotted in the wild the very first Ladybird user because uh, Le Fantôme here <laughs> posted on Hacker News saying that he's using Ladybird. And I thought that was awesome. So we are not the only ones trying to live on Ladybird. Uh, we got got some grassroots support out there as well. That's really awesome. So thank you, Le Fantôme, for being such a um, extreme early adopter. I love it. <laughs> and uh, next thing I want to talk about is fuzzing. So uh, fuzzing is something that we haven't really been doing with Ladybird, except for the JavaScript engine. But um, this month, I wrote a blog post called Fuzzing Ladybird with Tools from Google Project Zero. And uh, I'll put a link to it in the description. But essentially, it's an article about using a DOM fuzzer called Domato from Google Project Zero um, to find bugs in Ladybird. And you can get this fuzzer yourself. The way it works is that you run it, um, you pass it an output directory, and it will create as many uh, single files, single file inputs as you want. So it creates these huge half megabyte files, um, which are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you take one of those files, load it into a browser, and hopefully it doesn't crash. But if it does crash, you then have something to debug. Uh, and I was able to use this um, to find a whole bunch of issues that were real bugs, like real logic errors. I, I also found some spec bugs, which is really, really good. Uh, so it wasn't just our own bugs, but we were able to report bugs to the spec thanks to this, um, which is, of course, because we've uh, implemented the spec so literally <laughs> sometimes that, um, that when a bug occurs, it turns out that the bug is actually in the spec because we did literally what was in the spec and the spec had something wrong. Um, so I did a bunch of Damato driven fixes this month and Tim Ledbetter did a whole bunch as well. And it's still not at the point where you can just keep throwing um, these test cases at the browser and it will just survive. It, it does still uh, crash or uh, assert rather pretty frequently. So it is something that we want to continue improving because once we can get it to the point where it can run for a while and, and chew through tests without failing, uh, then we could set up automated um, execution of, of these types of fuzzers and then 
um, use that to find more issues over time. Um, but at the moment, it's very, very easy to, to get a failure. So if anybody's interested, um, check out my blog post and go get D'Amato, try it out with Ladybird, and I'm sure that you will find some, some bug that you can fix. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of other improvements, of course, as well. Um, some highlights I thought this month were audio indicators on tabs. So uh, Tim has added these. Uh, they show up uh, to the left um, if you have audio playing in a tab. And um, now you can also click to mute or unmute the tab. Um, I think I saw just last night Tim was adding. Uh, and this is fantastic. And of course, as you can see here, a screenshot of SoundCloud, which also well, we also got working this month. Uh, very exciting. Uh, it wasn't part of the Living On program. It just sort of just sort of started working, um, just as a as a result of all kinds of other things that we've been improving. Uh, random websites, even big complicated ones, do start working as well, which is fantastic to see. But yeah, audio indicator on tabs, really really good because. It is obviously very annoying when you have sound coming out of your computer and you don't know what's causing it. So we don't want to we don't want to turn back the clock and go back to that uh, thing where you have to look through a hundred tabs to figure out which one is playing sound. <laughs> so we're gonna come right out the gate with with this feature. Um, and we've also made a lot of SVG rendering progress this month. Um, uh, this here are two screenshots of, I think it's a avatar, like one of the possible avatars on the Gartic phone, uh, web game. And, uh, Benjamin has been doing a lot of SVG work. So I think this month he finished everything that we needed to display this avatar. The, the picture on the left is sort of where we were in, uh, I think start of February and on the right is where we are now. So uh, I think the latest additions were SVG clip path elements, uh, which allow you to clip uh, rendering to a arbitrary path. So very, very exciting to have better SVG support. Thank you so much, Benjamin, for working on that. Uh, and another cool one, also clipping related. Uh, this one is background clip text. Um, so it used to look the way it does on the left here. Uh, websites often do this where they have some sort of gradient background or interesting um, background and then they use background clip text to um, get the effect you see on the right and uh, we uh, we've had these sort of gradient rectangles show up on a lot of websites uh, until now because Zach implemented background clip text so that is very very exciting because now we can see a lot more text and it looks a lot more fancy so thank you Zach for working on that uh, and uh, I also did a whole bunch of CSS optimizations this month. They are um, somewhat esoteric, but uh, uh, the basic idea was to reduce the amount of work that we have to do on GitHub because a lot of, or most of the time on the site was being spent in CSS. So uh, I added a DOM ancestor filter, which means that, um, well, it's pretty hairy, but it essentially means that every selector uh, knows what the ancestor chain must look like for a DOM element to match. Uh, and if the current ancestor chain, while we are matching selectors, does not look like that, we can quickly reject that selector without having to evaluate uh, its components. And that is much, much faster than actually running the selector matcher. Um, so that allows us to reject a large number of rules very, very quickly. And then we have better bucketing of CSS rules. So, uh, for example, attribute selectors are now um, bucketed by name so that uh, we can say when you're looking at an element, um, without having to run a selector, we can say like, oh, well, this selector requires the presence of um, this or that attribute. And if the element doesn't have this or that attribute, we can reject the selector without having to run it. Um, and I also implemented an iterative algorithm for uncomplicated selectors, which means that we don't have to do recursion. Uh, that saves a lot of time as well. And a ton of small things like uh, micro optimizations, uh, like uh, not doing unnecessary hash lookups or not uh, revalidating UTF-8 when we already know something is UTF-8, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like tons of uh, little 1%, 2% improvements that all stack up. 
uh, I think I was able to cut the number of CSS selectors that we have to run on GitHub by something like 70%. So um, that was a substantial reduction in work that we have to do. But uh, there's still a lot of heavy lifting in CSS on GitHub, but, but uh, I've been able to cut it by quite a lot. Uh, and it's something that we're going to have to keep working on going forward um, in, a, in order to make the site feel really good and uh, snappy when you're interacting with it. But I just wanted to mention some of these things because I thought they were fun to, to implement. And uh, um, some of these are things that we did in WebKit like 12 years ago. So it was really fun to sort of come back and implement those kind of things again. Anyway. <laughs> Now, I've been talking and talking, so I'd like to give you a little demo of where we're currently at with Ladybird. So let's launch Ladybird, and maybe we will go to our GitHub repository, because as I mentioned, we have been working a lot on GitHub this month. And I think we are going to go take a look at the list of pull requests, and um, maybe we will... Oh, we can open one up, like this one here from Tim, about the uh, audio state button, which I mentioned, uh, specific to the Qt Chrome. So we might want to review this. Perhaps we want to look at the individual commits and uh, maybe even a specific commit. Um, and maybe we would want to comment, for example, on something that's going on in this commit. So we would open the uh, comment thing here and write something like, hello, Tim. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't put, put nonsense uh, on the issue here. Uh, but I've actually looked at this PR before I started recording, and I know that it's something that I want to merge. So... Uh, it actually does have the PR needs review label here. I don't know what this white <laughs> rectangle is that shows up when I hover it. Um, but I could potentially add some some more um, issues here if I wanted to. That's something we got working this month. But I'm just going to go ahead and rebase and merge. So we are doing that. And ta-da! <laughs> we have merged a PR from Ladybird in the monthly update video. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Yay for us. Uh, but yeah, so as you can see, we have made great progress on GitHub this month. A lot of stuff just kind of works, which is super sweet. Uh, there are glitches and there are some hangs in particular, especially when you um, navigate between a bunch of different sub pages within the same tab that can cause trouble. Uh, it's something that we're working on. Um, we also got this account um, dialogue or account popover modal thing here working this month as well. Um, but just uh, very, very nice to have, have GitHub up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll just close these. And how about we go somewhere totally different? Uh, and let's go to SoundCloud. Um, it shows a little sorry something went wrong message there while you're loading, but eventually it should catch up. Uh, again, very, very heavy website, lots of stuff to load in. Um, once we get better at caching network resources, uh, loading sites like this is going to be less painful, I suspect. So here I'm going to go ahead and search for my favorite artist, um, my wife. <laughs> And uh, let's uh, put on her latest track here. Uh, it should now be playing. And um, hopefully I'm recording the video correctly so you can hear it. Uh, and I can actually browse around on the site while it's playing in the background. It's fully interactive. Um, and we could even leave a comment. Uh, this is awesome uh, but I'm not logged in so I can't actually post it I guess it would offer me to log in <laughs> but uh, not gonna do that now but yeah this is really really cool um, and oh <laughs> that's how long that lasted yeah so we do have issues that we do need to track down but um, 
the fact that SoundCloud just started working, I don't think anybody was targeting it specifically. It was just sort of a result of us making a million other things work. SoundCloud also started working. That is awesome. I love that. So uh, really happy with that. And um, I guess another thing that I could show you is how Domato works, the DOM fuzzer that I talked about. So uh, if you've checked out the sources of Domato, it looks like this. Uh, and you can then run this generator Python script. So I will just give it an output directory, output, and I will say I want 100 files. And then it will generate 100 files. And then you just go in the output directory and you have these 100 fuzz files. And we can see that they are all pretty large. They're about half a megabyte each. Um, and then you can just try them out in a browser and see what happens. And they look like absolute nonsense when you load them. Um, and if you look at them in Vim, you can see that it's a bunch of randomized CSS followed by a whole bunch of randomized JavaScript. Uh, and at the end, you have a bunch of randomized uh, HTML. So uh, they all look like that. And uh, an interesting thing you can do just is to just load one after the other. So um, we would just load each file here and open it in Ladybird. And then, oh, we got a crash here. So that's something we could look at. Um, actually, why does Ladybird look so weird? I think it's because of my cute theme. Hold on. Yeah, so we got a crash here. That's something we can investigate. Uh, and open the next file. This one works. Next file. A crash and uh, yeah these are issues that then uh, you can use a debug build to identify uh, most of them tend to be just um, assertions or null pointer dereferences um, I haven't seen any kind of traditional memory safety issues yet but um, still it is it is very very easy to trigger bugs with this so we have a lot of um, things that need tracking down. So if anybody's interested, that's how easy it is to run Domato. You just run the generate script with Python. Um, oh, I see. That's curious. Um, yeah, so that's not executable like I tried. Um, and yeah, you generate output, and then you just go in the output and look at each individual file. And the workflow with these is kind of that you, if you have one that's crashing, then you have to remove stuff from it until you have the bare minimum that makes it crash, and then you can debug what that is. Anyway, all right, that's everything I wanted to share with you today. So thank you so much for checking in and staying up to date with the Ladybird project. Uh, I am obviously very excited about this and very proud of the team working on it. Uh, so... If you want to participate in development or um, sponsor or support developers in some way, check out links in the video description. Uh, we are always happy to welcome new developers into our project. So come chat with us on Discord if you are interested in this type of stuff. Um, other than that, um, I guess I'll see you next time.